Hi, this spreadsheet is to help you keep track of any job applications that you make. It's a very simple spreadsheet. There's nothing very technical to it. It's literally just a list of different columns. Um, as you can see, it just goes on up to, all the way up to column, uh, column P. Um, you can literally type in the relevant information into these columns and you can use the columns or not depending on what's relevant and um, you might not have all the information at the initial point um, so you can always come back and change it later. So um, I've put some dummy data in so you can see um, some of the cells will be restricted to what you can enter so this one for example um, gives you a pop-up as you click on any of these cells you'll get a little pop-up message to guide you as to what to enter in. This one doesn't give you any guidance so you can enter it's free text you can do what you like with those cells. So in this cell we need to enter a date and it says please enter the date using the format dd backslash mm backslash yy. So if we put in today's date, 14.08.20 and press enter, you'll see it formats and it includes the day of the week, but you don't type it in that way. You have to use this format so it recognises it as a date. Um, so the job title, it might be, I'm just going to say admin assistant, um, put the name of the company in, I'm going to say company K. Uh, what area is it? Uh, and it, again, this all this information that you put in is just to help you um, analyse all the information later so if it's not relevant you're not bothered what area you're looking at then that's you can just leave it out but I'm just going to put we're all you can put in the phone number the, the website the salary and um, by put 20,000 in there other incentives so it might help you if you're comparing and contrasting different roles um, so you can send those in any other notes um, anything that's you know of interest to each role or stand out um, just move across these other columns so these columns are all asking for dates again so you get the yellow pop-up asking you to enter the date using the format ddmmyy so um this is pretty much the same column as date applied it may just be that there isn't a formal application to make so fill it in as appropriate so i'm going to put in 14 18 14 8 20 in there um it may well be that you just send a cv um as opposed to putting in a formal application so you can fill in whichever whichever column is relevant um, if you get an interview, you can put the date in there, but again, at this stage, you might just put the application in so you don't know. Um, so you'd have a follow-up date, so maybe you'd put in a date, say the 21st of August, which is next week. So um, you might, if you've not heard anything, you might give them a call and that would be your follow-up action. Um, this column for notes is sort of notes that you would add in as you finish the interview for example you might put additional information in or if they tell you that they're interviewing for another two weeks you might put that information in there um, this column here is um, where you would say whether the application is live or closed um, and what you'll see when you click on any of these cells you get a little arrow appear to the right of the cell um, so if you click on there it gives you a little drop down list and you can choose between live or closed so if you choose live you'll notice that the entire row will turn green and if you change that to close, the entire red, row will turn red. And it just helps you to differentiate using colours. Um, and you can, if you delete that, if you don't want either live or closed, you can just delete that cell. Um, so it, it's neither. Or you can just toggle as much as you want to the, the different options there. So that's how to put new data into the spreadsheet. Um, once you've got some data in there, it's really useful because I've included filters at the top of each column, which are these little drop downs. Um, so what you could do is you could go into the follow up date column and if you click on the little arrow there, you get all of the dates that appear in that column and they will update automatically as you add in a new date. They will also um, be grouped into months and year. And what you'll notice alongside is you've got a little minus there against two, uh, 2020, against the year, which means you can collapse it. Um, you've got little pluses against the months, so that means you can expand them. So if you click on the little plus for August, it gives you every individual date in August. So you can just select, so if I want to select all and just choose um, the 12th, the 17th and the 19th and click OK, what will happen is it temporarily hides all of the other rows that don't meet that criteria. And when you've applied a filter, you'll notice that this the little arrow here now has a funnel at the top to tell you this is the column that's been filtered. But also the row numbers on the left hand side have turned blue in colour as opposed to black at the bottom. Um, so that's always your telltale sign that there's a filter been applied. Um, but this helps you if um, in each week you might say, right, what are my actions for this week? And you can just filter on them. Um, and then when you finish looking at those, you can click back on the, the funnel 
um, and you can click select all and click OK and the filter will be removed and all the data comes back as it was and you'll see that the row numbers are back, um, they're black in colour again. So these filters again are really useful because you could filter on show me all of the roles I've applied for in Liverpool if you wanted. Um, the other brilliant thing about the colours that I've put in is that any single column at all includes a filter by colour. So you could choose there on any column, just show me the green one, so you're only ever looking at live. So you could leave that filter on there and you could choose show me Liverpool and Chester maybe. So it's showing you all of the live applications in the specific areas. Or you could take that off and just see all of the live jobs. So you're just hiding all the, cl all the closed jobs. Okay, so these, these filters are really helpful and um, just help you navigate around the data and um, drill down into information quickly. Um, I've also put a salary column in there. So what we could do with this one is filter by anything that is, if we do number filter, anything greater than. So we could look for anything greater than 20,000. And it just shows you all the jobs greater um, with the higher salary. Okay, so you've got loads of different options with all those columns. Um, so the fab thing about this sheet as well is that there's a dashboard. So if you click on this sheet, this will automatically update to show you all of this information visually. So if you click in dashboard, what you'll see is at the top we've got the total number of applications is 10. Oh, it's just updating. It's 11. Um, live there are 9 and there are 2 closed. Okay, we've then got a, state, a pie chart which shows us by status that of the 11 applications, that's the nine live ones in green and the two closed. So it just shows you graphically the information. Um, this chart shows us um, by area, uh, what percentage of the applications are in which area. So it's pretty evenly spread right now because so it's dummy data. Um, and then this chart down here shows us um, the company, so it's the company name and the salary at each one. Um, so it just helps us sort of see the, the trend, if you like, um, and who the companies are. What you've got on the right hand side are, these are called slices and this is the timeline. So what these do, um, this timeline has been set to just show August, so I'll just take that filter off. I think there is only August data in there. Um, so that's showing everything now. Okay, um, with the area, for example, I could just select Liverpool. So you can just select one, and what it will do is it will change all of these charts to show us that data just for Liverpool. If you wanted to see more than one area, you can um, so click on the one that you want, the first one. So click on Chester. If you hold down Shift on your keyboard and then select Manchester, it will highlight everything in between. So that's now showing us those three areas. Okay, I could then on the status slicer choose just the live ones. So if just click on live. So this chart becomes a bit useless really because they're all going to be live because we've said don't show us a closed. Um, but it just shows us different ways. Um, so once we've had enough of looking at these um, slices, we can click on the funnel at the top of the, the red cross that is remove the filter. So if I click on there, it will show us all of the areas again. If you click on this one, it will show us all of the statuses again. But what you should notice is that when you make a selection um, of an area, it will take the next slicer and it will drill down. So you can see that these items at the bottom have gr are slightly greyed out. So that's because they're not relevant for that area. And um, so it really helps you to sort of drill down into the information. OK, so that is just a little bit of a summary just to show you the analysis of the data that you've applied for. And you literally need to do nothing. It will automatically update itself. So I hope you find that useful. Thank you.